the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things He's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you. My Father in heaven, Lord, you're worthy to be praised, honored, and glorified. And we thank you, dear God, for who you are. Yes. Lord, you are uh, indescribable. You are, uh, you, it is difficult for us to really wrap our minds around who you actually are. Yes. Nevertheless, dear Lord, you have done what you needed to do to make it evident that you exist that you are in our lives and that you love us and you've demonstrated that through what you've done with your son Jesus Christ yes. who you love and but for the transgressions of, of this world for the transgressions of human beings dear Lord you you sacrificed your son and he voluntarily gave his life so that there would be a worthy sacrifice yes. in that we would have an opportunity for an intimate relationship with you, God, our Father. So we thank you for, we thank you for our love. We thank you for a show of mercy, for a show of compassion, and for a show of grace, still beyond our understanding. Yes. And our faith, dear Lord, is in you. Yes. And that gives us hope. And so therefore we have joy that is beyond the understanding of, of, of many people in this world who don't know who you are. Yes. Well, we thank you that you have given us an opportunity to come together and study your word. And in studying your word, dear Lord, let us pass that gospel news on to others. Yes. So that more and more people can be touched, be exposed to the truth, which is your son, Jesus Christ. The only way, the only truth, the only life that leads us back to you, dear Father. Yes. We thank you for those who uh, are working diligently to get the gospel message out mm. all over the planet, not just through this medium here, but all over the planet. Yes. We thank you, dear Lord, that there are individuals who, who voluntarily put their, their lives in harm's way so that your message can go out to the highways and the byways and places where many of us have no idea uh, exist. Come on. Thank you, dear Father, for all that you've done, known and unknown, by each of us. We say these things in Jesus' precious and holy name. Amen. 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 Hey, Brother Jackson, what we, what we did was, first of all, happy Mother's Day for your daughter. Hallelujah. Because you. Uh, you have you have one. How many daughters you got? I have two daughters, but uh, yeah, yeah just one has, has children. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. So happy Mother's Day for the young lady. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I know that she made you, making you a proud grandfather. Oh yeah, <laughs> definitely. Hey, come on now, come on. My fact, were you there when she had the child, or did you? Uh, uh, no. You went up there after the fact. Yeah, I went up there after the fact. Yeah, because of COVID and all that, couldn't get there for the for the fourth one. Uh, you know. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Woo! Boy, come on, bro. Stop running yes, over. Sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. <laughs> they, they all doing well. Too. They all doing well. Amen. Praise and have another day for all the uh, people out there that that get this uh, uh, listen video. I, I what I what I would uh, we talked about was the continuation, uh, really, or wrapping up maybe the uh, the parable of Mark chapter four, uh, verses one through nine is what we were <laughs> wrapping up, and uh, it, it the, the brothers took it to uh, uh, another level, and I wanted to. Uh, <laughs> I was very impressed with the with the other the next level that you took it in, and I wanted to share it with you before you get a chance to leave. And uh, they, they come in, they just got to come in while we're doing a review. Uh, amen. They amen. Do review. So, so those who are listening, we will be doing uh, Mark chapter four, uh, the parable of the sower. And as we do the parable of sower. Uh, the, these pictures right here uh, just represents the, the the different ground that was uh, dealt with, the stony ground, the, uh, the, the thorns, uh, and, and and it's interesting when I get to it, the, the first person on that in that picture uh, is the person of unbelief, just uh, uh, 
project. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you got Stony Ground. There you go. He's here. He's here already. Uh, <laughs> Roger that. We'll have to bring him on into it so he can uh, chime in. But anyway, the, 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 those are the four different grounds dealing with the, uh, the parable uh, of uh, Mark chapter 4. And what I was just showing you is that you, we can get a quick line to the bed of the sower uh, in Jesus Christ. And, and he's going by the different various grounds. And the next thing right here are the questions that uh, Bishop wanted us to try to take a look at. Uh, we we're saying that before we move on uh, to something else, he had a few questions about the parable. <laughs> and as you have read it, because you have read Mark chapter 4, correct? Uh, Brother Jackson, you have read those before, right? Yes. The, the parable. Yes. Yes, sir. And so what, what the question he asked was, and, and you know, maybe we still didn't bring you in on it from that perspective. What, what is that peculiar heart condition ascribed in the good soul? You know, uh, I'll read all three questions first and then we can, we can apply four questions then you can see if you want to answer them. Mm-hmm. What is the discipleship significance of the various soil types? Uh, what kind of soil are you and I? Uh, can we progress to good soil? Mm-hmm. Uh, if so, how? Uh, where, how does good soil come about? And then he said he'd like to, if you can ask him, ask him more within the scripture. So what what, what, you, what we can do here, uh, Brother Jackson got to leave this around about uh, 8.45. He got to teach today. Uh, I, I wanted the questions, and I did do a quick wrap up of, of it, but being fruitful was the difference between the, the superiority of the, the good soil it was fruitful where the other soils were unfruitful they didn't bear any fruit uh, and then what what is the cybership significance of the various soil types and then we'll, we'll go those through the slides uh but the the four areas we said was by the wayside fell on the ground fell on my thorn fell on the ground and on the good ground things for 100 Six and thirty, and then we got good, good there, only a hundred. Uh, the question is so hard to bestow the man, but what's going on? But anyway, let's go here real quick. Uh, he did ask that question what kind of soil are you and I? Only got put down was ground is, is our soul. Uh, can we progress to good soil? I put in that we're we going to refer to John 15. Uh, if so, how, where does this soil come from? I put that reference John 15 again in Romans 14. And then he said, we have to use scriptures. But anyway, uh, back to the, uh, Brother Jackson, I brought it here for you. You can start, take it, just give your, your shot at it. Uh, here's Mark 4. I did put down is this that the, uh, the first two said, and he began to teach by the seaside. And there was gathered unto him a great multitude. So he entered into a ship and sat in the sea. And the whole multitude was by the sea on the land. And he taught them many things by parables and said unto them in his doctrine. Uh, and what I wanted to, you know, last Sunday we were talking, Sunday for last we were talking is that he was always talking about the kingdom. And I just mm-hmm. want to make sure we understand the scripture, his doctrine was, uh, you know, even in Mark 4, 17, he said, from that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That's in mm-hmm. Matthew uh, 4, 17. So we know that that's his doctrine. You know, mm-hmm. for, and, I, and I'm doing that to break down for other people as we, you know, as we read the word, read the scripture, where we're coming from, where we're getting certain things from. The, the scripture is saying that's, that's the doctrine that he was preaching, right? Right. The doctrine of the kingdom of God, and uh, you know, as you read the gospel, understand that the doctrine, the doctrine Jesus preached to repent, and I put that repent is to change your way of thinking because the kingdom of heaven is at hand. I was kind of uh, broke down that, you know, like if you're reading it, right? How you say it is, as you read the God's gospel, understand that the doctrine Jesus preached to repent 
change your way of thinking because the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He wanted us to focus on God's kingdom. So I'm saying that even as you're teaching today, you know, it's, it's about God's kingdom. He's preaching the kingdom of God, right? Uh, right. And the Bible even says, even as we go through life challenges, even in Matthew 6, 36, it says, but seek ye first in that prayer he was telling, he was telling us to deal with. He said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things should be added into you. So it's just, it's just a way of our life as, as we go around and read scriptures, uh, as we go and teach the word of God, preach the word of God, represent Jesus Christ. It's, it's all about the, the kingdom of God, right? And the fact is that the kingdom, and I'll go to this uh, next slide, the first slide we're dealing with is uh, uh, the sun. The sower is the sun. God sent in his kingdom, the sower, Jesus Christ. So from your perspective, verse 4, 3, uh, what do you get from that? With a, you know, hearken, behold, they went out and sowed the sow. Um, you know, the thing about, I, I was thinking about the word sowing and um, that's a person who is out now they're putting the seeds in the ground right but there's a hope there is a there is a there is a the, the plan is is that the seeds will come up come on now and uh, and they will the plan is is that they will come up and produce come on. and so in this case we have uh and I, and I may be wrong but I'm just kind of just looking at it very very uh when I say superficially not trying to put too much into it just yet until right. you know I get a little bit of but you know he, he he's out there sowing and and when we look at the different parables he's everywhere yeah. in, in my perspective uh the lord jesus is is putting out the gospel or or putting out the information about the kingdom uh -huh. everywhere everywhere and yeah. so he is doing what he needs to do now what then happens is you know the results uh in this case a, a lot of uh, times that re those results are we, you know sometimes we like to say it's god the results are up to god yes but we have to be willing vessels come on now okay and so uh jesus went out to sow uh earnestly and sincerely irregardless as to where his word landed you know what i mean yeah. in other words whether you were a pharisee a sadducee uh, a, 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 a tax collector um you, you know it didn't really make a difference he just went out and did what he was supposed to do to spread the message about the kingdom yes yes okay and um and and i'm I don't know if you want me to get into the other aspects of the scripture, you know, but um, I'm just kind of isolating it right there. Behold, yes, there were not any sower to stow. Yes, sir. And I like that because, like I said, we're better than, I, this year, we're trying to push from a dissecting point of view because I wanted to, that way as people read it themselves, you know, they kind of break down each of those levels as much as you can. Uh, and, and like I said, I like that because, like I said, it's by faith, right? There's an expectation mm -hmm. uh, of, of, of faith in there mm -hmm. and then one of the questions he did ask is where is faith in that parable right mm -hmm. uh mm -hmm. and i even put down there it says listen with understanding i'll try to break that, that scripture down too from how it stands and from the spiritual perspective is listen with understanding and think with your spiritual ears Really, I mean, spirit, think, think with your spiritual mind, end with your spiritual ears, your inner man, and by faith. Mm -hmm. You know, so so we do want to take it to another level of, of, of from a spiritual perspective. He's saying, listen, listen where, right? It's not in our natural ears, but in our spiritual ears, right? Right. Yeah, so I mean, and then the other thing, Bishop and I talked about Thursday was listen with understanding 
you know, you as a teacher is one of the things, even as you teach in the school, you're, 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 you're really trying to convey understanding to the students, right? Mm -hmm. In other words, mm -hmm. I, I want to bring the words I'm trying to convey to you with life. And, and the only way you're going to get life is get understanding of, those, of, of the education and of the material mm -hmm. that I'm giving you, right? And that's all you're going to get it. You're not going to get it from a surface level. You're going to get it from a understanding level. And, and Christ is here saying is, listen with understanding. Uh, and we put that here as far as the word of God. It says in Romans 1, 17, but then the righteousness of God is there from what? Faith to faith, faith to right? Faith. As it is written, it just shall live by faith. So even when mm -hmm. we study the word and teaching the word, it's by faith. Mm -hmm. Taking it to that next level. It said he had broke that the uh, scripture down. This is me re, you know, re, re, rewriting the scriptures, not for the sense of saying it's written, but how we go read it or how I'm reading it. It says, Behold, there went out of God's kingdom. This is just going back to that first, you know, Mark 4 3. Right? Right. Okay. So, behold. But he said, hearken, right? So I'm just taking from what I'm saying, we're hearken. Behold, there went out of God's kingdom, God's only begotten son, to sow God's word about his kingdom. Yes. Jesus was sent to sow faith in God into the hearts, brackets, souls of man. Mm -hmm. You see? And so then faith comes by what? Hearing. hearing. And hearing the word of God. So like you said, that's how I was breaking down that, Bishop, that's how I was breaking down that first piece of it. And, 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 and you know, Bishop will go even more deeper. But the bottom line is, is that that's, that's, that's reading that scripture, right? Breaking that down. What is it saying? What was the hearers hearing? And, and unfortunately, they were not here with understanding because if you go to the, let's see the next slide. He said, I put down here, however, the listeners of that parable, they, they did it without understanding, the parable without understanding. However, the listeners hear or heard, really, this parable, I should have been heard, sorry, heard this parable without understanding. Mm -hmm. And Matthew, that's confirmed in Matthew 13, 14. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which says, by hearing, you shall hear and shall not understand. And seeing, you shall see and shall not perceive. Mm -hmm. Therefore, faith this is for even as you're teaching today, right? Therefore, faith come, cannot come without understanding what you should have faith in. Mm -hmm. In other words, faith in God, right? That's that's what we do. When we're reading these scriptures, it's all about faith, isn't it? You're right. It's all about faith. And, and unfortunately, uh, when they were hearing the parable of this, it was the fact they didn't understand. Uh, and that's what Bishop and I was talking about Thursday. They they didn't have an understanding. Uh, and that's why he had to break it down to the, the disciples and the, those who were with them because he said for them to get the mystery of the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. But it's also important as you're teaching today is that I want you to understand. <laughs> I don't want you, I don't, I'm not here for cliche, right? I'm here, I'm here for understanding God's word. I want to convey my understanding to to the, the people I'm going to instruct to today. So always keep that in mind. Uh, I put that here as Bishop was talking Sunday, I mean Thursday, we're saying is once again, I'm just reading the uh, script again, Mark 4, 3. And you can stay on one scripture for a long time <laughs> if, you, if you look at it. No, oh, definitely. <laughs> this is what the scripture came out of. It was... Uh, Look at this, uh, 2 Corinthians uh, 4, 1. Therefore, sin, we have this ministry. You you get ready to go do part of the ministry, right? <laughs> Therefore, mm -hmm. sin, we have this ministry. As we have received mercy, we faint not. 
but have renounced this. And this was going on, uh, Brother Jackson. And I tell my, you know, what you're doing is going to try to put the saints to do the work of the ministry, right? I mean, anybody's right. coming to get education today, 845, is to get understanding, get equipped to do the word of God. Mm-hmm. And one of the things we need to understand is, therefore, seeing, okay, verse two, but we have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, not handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience, which is the soul again, in the sight of God. Mm-hmm. But look, verse three, but if our gospel is here, it is mm-hmm. here to them that are what? Lost. Mm-hmm. And uh, let me interrupt you right there. Um, and you know, the thing about this here is uh, we have today individuals who are speaking the words. Come on now. But right there, it <laughs> is here to them that are lost. See, they can, they can, uh, read it they can even get behind the pulpit they can even have a congregation they can even say or i should say maybe we because you know we also have to look into ourselves right it can be hidden and unfortunately uh, because in the dialogue that we are seeing today a lot of people are using the word for their uh, what used to be, I would say, hidden agendas, but now the agendas, they are overt, but the real meaning behind the scripture is still lost to them. I heard somebody say the other day uh, something very interesting. He said, you know, the things that people would say at one time in uh, in a whisper, now they are saying out loud. Yeah. And when the when the person said that, I was like, wow, very I, I like the way you put that. And then at the same time, I was thinking, and look at you. Listen to you. You are speaking really about yourself. And I wonder if you know that, you know? Yeah. And uh and so when we talk about these two verses right here, if if <laughs> it's almost like, look, God tells us about ourselves mm. thoroughly. Yes, thoroughly and we are as we're talking about this different these different types of ground yeah where are we and i and i i throw out another question can we and i my answer to this is yes but can we be uh, uh in different ground based on the subject matter that we are talking about okay because you know something that is that I obviously agree with on the uh, right off the top, I'm already quote unquote fertile. But what if there's something that I, I that I that goes against my personal opinion? Now am I now am I on stony, thorny, or I, am I? Hey, look, whatever you got to say, that's by the wayside. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. So mm-hmm. yeah, so, so we think about the stony, and then my heart is hard against this area. You know. Yes. Uh, and I, yes. And I, I think uh, I was telling that. Uh, even Thursday, I was saying is that really the whole, when I look at the, if, if you take this synopsis or this, this, this uh, metaphor, our whole soul is a field. That's right. You know, a field for, for the sower can sow in. But there's this, there's, as we first come into life and come into the gospel, before we come into the gospel, we come in with a, uh, with, with different various aspects of our soil, of our soul. In other mm-hmm. words, in our soul, we have some hard ground, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. We, we have some stony ground, mm-hmm. is what I call hard ground. We we got some thorns in our in our in our soul that pull, it, and that's a challenge even by now, right? We have cares of this world. The seafiness of riches and the lust of other things trying to enter in, trying to choke mm-hmm. the word of God in us. Mm-hmm. But definitely in those who with the gospel of hidden. And then then we have um, unbelief. There's a problem mm-hmm. even in ourselves, right? There's, 
there's aspects of unbelief that we have to contend with as we we, we move forward and grow in the, in the kingdom. But yes. like you said, there's also fertile ground. Yes. Where that word was was given and was planted into our soul. So that's where it needs to be planted, because our spirit is connected to God, right? Man is a three-part being, spirit, soul, and body. And then our, our, our spirit is connected, and, and that's that link between us and God with the Holy Spirit. But that soul got all kinds of areas of, 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 of patches that need to be cultivated. Mm -hmm. And I think that was the answer to the question, is that we have to be cultivated to, to move forward, you know? Yeah. And, and, and like I said, with the, the devil that hit the the world, maybe it may have blind some of us in some areas too. <laughs> I guess we are blinded with some areas ourselves, but it said, verse four, in whom the God of the world has blinded the mind. Mm -hmm. Once again, the mind to me is interchanged with the soul of them which believe not. And there's some areas of unbelief. Did you get ready to say something? You, you're muted now. <laughs> okay, I got a question. I got a question. Yes, sir. Listening. If that is true, if the, if that virtue just read is true, where is the good soul in that virtue? You know, what I was I was referring to that time when Jesus came off of the who I referred to is that remember the, the, the young man whose son was a lunatic they were thrown in the fire and so forth and Jesus said all you have to do is believe and the guy said I believe Lord but help my unbelief so so I, I wonder when we talk about the uh, the people who even received Jesus Christ now, that's a good question to you just what you said though but I was really referring to in the believers uh, like of errors of unbelief, but a, a believer, unbeliever altogether, probably is not even going to. Uh, I don't, they, they probably don't have nothing. You're right. I, they they don't want to hear nothing, so they probably don't want to believe at all. <laughs> According to this text, if you look, if you, if you're using the text, and that's why I love this scripture. If you're using this text, yeah, this text says there is no good soul. Yeah, he's blind. Yeah, he has no understanding. None. This is the wayside saw that when he heals the truth, the enemy say he ain't gonna do nothing with it. Go get it. <laughs> he don't want to even receive it, does it? Yeah, he don't even he doesn't appreciate what he's got. He doesn't really know the value of what it is. He hasn't recognized the need for the whole life that's in Christ. Hmm. And, yeah. and you know, and if we don't have an understanding of a need for a thing, we typically don't want the thing. Exactly. Why understanding is so important. Right. And I then the first I saw you notice he said, I understand it did not. When there is no understanding, when there is no recognition, a perception of the value of what's being set before you, you typically are not interested. Yeah, you 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 can you can't receive it because it's not it's not transmitting right. For you and I've been saying that even as, as as so even when we try to talk to people that 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 wayside is the unbelief for exactly someone that's they, they just can't they can't see it you know so so even as we teach the people like you're going to teach today is understanding quickly that, that some people just blind it and, and they're not going to receive the, you know the gospel but we're still supposed to go ahead bishop and and, and like you said, we like Christ tell us, we're still supposed to preach it, right? We're still supposed to sit, we're supposed to plant, so, just so. Whether they receive it or not, we, we, we don't know where it's going to hit. Uh, one of the things, too, is that we, our Brother Jackson in Mark 4, you know, at 10 through 20, Jesus explaining the parable. Yes. And one of the things I caught was, is like, in Bishop asked that question, why does the devil come immediately to take the word of the sown in their heart? That's in verse, uh, I think it's verse 12 or something like that. But but why why would it why would the devil come immediately to take the word from the people that are by the wayside, take that word immediately, 